Let us pray. Father in heaven, great is thy faithfulness towards each one of us, and your mercies are new every morning. And today we are thankful that we can have an opportunity to receive instructions in righteousness, to receive encouragement in these times of great crises. Please, Lord, revive us, reform us, we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Greetings, salutations, welcome to this Midday Power Surge, Thursday, February 11th, 2021. This is your spiritual oasis on this pilgrim journey. Safe to serve international, first time viewers, I greet you as strangers and pilgrims on this earth. And for the rest of you, welcome one. Welcome all to this midday power surge. What we're going to cover are some very solemn and pertinent information. On yesterday, we covered, as you can see on the screen, Professor says creationism bears all the hallmarks of a conspiracy theory. In other words, those who believe in the biblical creation is a threat. I covered that yesterday during midday power surge. Is a threat. And this is beginning in the book of Genesis, creation story, that these individuals are conspiracy theorists. And notice, they linked Bible belief in Christians with QAnon. Think about that. And of course, this is an attack on God's seventh day Sabbath. Understand that, friends. All right. Notice, and we showed that this is a, a burgeoning movement that is on foot. Others have labeled and linked Seventh day Adventists, Bible believing Christians, as conspiracy theorists. I covered that yesterday. Notice here, friends. Watch carefully. Here we have it, friends. This is February 8th, 2021. Bill Mayer mocks the Bible and Christians as secular Democrats say religious right is a threat to America. You think about that, friends. Bill Mayer is the latest mouthpiece from the left who's attempting to smear conservative American Christians based on the bad behaviors of a small fringe. The events of January 6, he said, were a faith-based initiative. <laughs> he went on to say, the outspoken atheist went on to blame the Bible, hmm, belittling the end time symbolism in the book of Revelation by calling it magic and saying the Bible is the source. The Bible is the source of the conspiracy theory known as QAnon. And friends, remember, there are three diabolical beasts portrayed in the book of Revelation. And we normally focus on the two beasts of Revelation 13. The beast from the sea, verse 1 through verse 10, the papacy. The lamb-like beast from the earth, verse 11 through verse 18, apostate Protestant America. What about the other in Revelation chapter 11? The beast from the bottomless pit with the characteristics of Egypt, atheism, and sodomy, licentiousness, warring, burning Bibles, the same spirit, the same sentiment, draconian policies found during the French Revolution, 
the 1780s, 1790s, those same tenets are rife today. There it is, friends. Clear as day. Look at this. It goes on. Have you ever read the book of Revelations? That's the Bible, Bill Mayer. That's your holy book, Christians. Taunting believers. Magical religious thinking is a virus. And QAnon is just its current mutation. What? Labeling. And some of you may think this is comical. It's just Bill Mayer's whims. I want to say this. Remember, Satan and the Antichrist system will use people of notoriety, even so-called entertainers who have influence and clout on the masses to spread propaganda, to sow seeds that one day will be a fruit to lead to the persecution of God's remnant people. So don't scoff at this. Don't turn your head the other direction that this is not significant. All right. It goes on. It says, when you are, by the way, he's labeling Christians a virus. Do you remember what Popery, even Pope Francis, labeled Christians as? A plague. That they are sick. They are fundamentalists. They refuse to yield the law. Give up the Ten Commandments. And what are we told from Roman Catholic writings? That the death penalty, do you remember that? Oh yes, can be applied for the common good on those papist leaders view as infectious to the community. Do you remember that, friends? That means so-called fundamentalists. Bible-believing Christians are infectious to the community. Is that not synonymous to a virus? Wake up. It goes on. When you are a QAnon fanatic, you're also a fundamentalist Christian, he said. Fundamentalist Christian. Meanwhile, it's not just Bill Mayer who has it out for Christians. Oh, no. A group called Secular Democrats of America has called on the Biden administration to undermine the constitutional religious freedoms of Christians in America. This is a burgeoning movement. It's expanding. Yet God's professed people, the majority of them, are pulling the covers over them and they are snoring fast asleep. As I always say, it's a self-induced stupor. Here are some disturbing excerpts from the actual language used by the secular Democrats of America in their warning to Biden back in November. Since I quoted the words of Bill Mayer, now listen to this group. We urge you not to underestimate the institutional strength of what we refer to interchangeably in this document as the Christian nationalist movement or the religious right. Its agenda rests on a pinched interpretation of biblical principles preached by Christian nationalist leadership and thought leaders. Pause right there. Do you realize they label those who believe in the bi biblical creationist story as fanatics, a threat to America? And now Bill Mayer and this group are labeling those who believe in the book of Revelation are also a threat from Genesis to Revelation. Come on, friends. Come on. Wake up. Wake up, friends. And remember, Satan's attack is to inconvenience everybody, but it's after one group. Just as Haman destroyed all the Jews, but Haman's gripe was primarily with Mordecai. Esther chapter 1 all the way through chapter 8 of Esther. Likewise, Herod killed all the male children. But Herod's gripe, Herod's uh, dis, dis, despise was for one, Jesus Christ. goes on. It says, with their political agenda sanctioned by a higher power, 
Their base of support is disciplined, motivated, and deeply committed to a vision that does not align with our basic constitutional values and democratic principles. How much more can be said? Hasten our footsteps. Notice here, friends, from COVID, from pestilence 19 lockdown, to climate lockdown. Headline, February 7th, 2021. Are you ready for the climate lockdowns? Mm -hmm. Notice here, friends, what they're trying to do, you saw Biden allude to it there, with the Build Back Better. They are trying to essentially use the COVID lockdown model for the climate emergency lockdown. And they're going to go from COVID lockdowns to climate lockdowns. Did we not cover this yesterday? What the Pope is calling for? A rest for the environment to combat climate change and what day must the environment rest on sunday can you see the movement here friends in both segments of the current event you see that the crux the kernel is popery just as in daniel 2 the strength of this unification is the iron verse 41 says that Verse 42 to verse 45, Daniel 2, move on. Headline, February 4th, Saunders, Ocasio-Cortez, and the other unveil a bill pushing Biden to declare national climate emergency. Why? We are out of time. As I said before, in an emergency, they don't take much time to combat the emergency. If a building, a house is on fire, it's an emergency. Yes, friends, the, the, the first responders don't drive slowly to that location. They put on sirens. It's an alarm. We must get to that location. It's an emergency. Lives are at stake. I am telling you, expect a Sunday law to combat calamities to combat pestilences in the near future all right it lists the three peoples red words to declare a national climate emergency move on are you ready for the climate lockdowns what happened during the pestilence 19 lockdown what happened to our freedoms what happened to the economy what happened to our movement all these things were restricted. Are we seeing what's coming, friends? And many of our freedoms are still under attack. That's the point I'm making. Notice, it says, the possibility of climate lockdowns is already being floated by some of our greatest thinkers. They see a confluence of global crises as an opportunity, the perfect storm hmm. caused by the COVID-19 and the resulting global economic meltdown offers a chance to take what they see as bold and dramatic action to save the planet now, the next sentence says they're calling for the Biden administration to push through green legislation. That's Sunday for the earth, green legislation. Notice here, friends. It says, uh, watch carefully, Mr. Carl from the German Social Democratic Party wrote the following a month or so ago, quote, that we need measures to deal with climate change and a similar and that are similar let's repeat that we need measures to deal with climate change that are similar to the restrictions on personal freedom what you mean somebody put that in print let's repeat that 
we need measures to deal with climate change that are similar to the restrictions on personal freedom imposed to combat the pandemic. And friends, the primary attack of Satan and the Antichrist power is to restrict freedom of worship. That's it. Have we not been told this, my friend? Every principle of our constitution will be repudiated. Yes, that's chapter 13 and verse 11 of Revelation. Do you remember when we had the pestilence lockdown? They said everybody rested. They said greenhouse gas just declined. Our planes weren't flying. Cars weren't driving. It was a peaceful time for the environment. Watch this. So put everybody, make everybody inconvenient so the earth can breathe. Now, they won't do this every single day. Lockdown, no. It's a weekly lockdown. One day a week, Sunday, lockdown. That was prophesied. Look at this, friends. How would governors and the federal government impose climate lockdowns? How? Simple. By declaring that climate change is an immediate public health and national security crisis, etc., etc. And Bernie Sanders and, and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez announced a bill suggesting as much when yesterday. Is this a time of crisis, my friends? Oh, yes, it is. Look at this. It says... As we face the global crisis of climate change, it is imperative that the United States lead the world. Do what? Is that not prophetic? Because who will lead out in Sunday worship by law to combat calamities, to combat pestilences, to bring back temporal prosperity? It's not Germany. It's not Jamaica. It's not uh, Barbados. It's not the Bahamas. It's not Europe. The United States of America. That's why this administration, President Biden, re-entering the Paris Climate Global Agreement, it is significant. All I'm saying, friends, get ready. If it is, we are ready. If not, we are still ready. Notice. It says red words, my friends. They are pushing aggressively for climate change declaration. Not only leaders, but also the young people, the Sunrise Movement. That's it. The Green New Deal. And remember, it's the people who will cry out for what? A Sunday law. The people will cry out for it and the leaders to retain their position. And to receive votes will yield and enforce Sunday worship by law. Now, friends, I just covered these points. If this doesn't awaken you, nothing else will. And I didn't extend the current events too much. Just to make sure it is succinct and has nails in a sure place. In your heart, in your minds. To understand these things and to love the second coming of Christ and be prepared. And what I'm going to do now is the segue into heart preparation, heart conversion. In this segment, much warning is going to be promulgated for God's professed people. Here's one of my golden themes in this last segment. Who shall receive? Who shall proclaim? The final warning to a dying church and a perishing world. Do you want to know? Oh, my friends, I hope and wish I am a part of that group. I hope and wish you are a part of that group. Revelation chapter 18. The Bible tells us in verse 1 through verse number 4. That it is an angel, an angelic message that announces the nearness of the second coming of Jesus Christ. 
How do we know that? Verse number one mentions the angel. Verse number four now says, Come out of her, my people, God's people, that you be not partakers of her sins, and that you receive not of her plagues. Friends, when the seven last plagues begin to be poured out, it's a signal Jesus closes the work of intercession in the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary. And Revelation 16 confirms that. And verse number 17 says, after verse 5 and verse 7 about judgment, the plague's judgment, verse number 17 now says, it is done. That's it, friends. It's the angel that announces the nearness of the second coming of Jesus. Now watch. That same scripture says, that angel, he says, how we may know the second coming is near. In verse number two, he says, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils, the hold of every foul spirit, the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of fur fornication. Is this not the work of Popery? The Paris Climate Agreement Accord Sunday worship by law to combat calamities, pestilences are the signs here. The kings of the earth, it says, have committed fornication with Babylon. The merchants, the men, the moneyed men, the merchants of the earth are wax rich through what? The abundance of her delicacies. That means Popery, Babylon primarily, is in cahoots, have joined with the merchants of the earth for them to support, I cover that financially, to support and also to back the policies of Roman Catholicism, the policies of Jesuitism. The signs are here. Verse number one of Revelation 18 says, that angel, it says, he lightens the earth with his glory. Now watch the point, friends. An angel in the Bible is a messenger. And the Bible says uh, angels will assist God's human messengers to give the final warning, the everlasting gospel to a dying world, an apostate church. But remember, it is human beings primarily that will receive and proclaim the final message. Angels simply assist us. That's Hebrews chapter 1 and verse number 14. And think for a minute, if it were angels primarily that were given the task to preach the message so Christ can come, we would not still be here in 2021. No, the end would have come long time ago. God's professed people are in a spiritual stupor. They are at ease in Zion, wrapped up in apostasy and worldliness. So now watch, in order for us to understand this angel, these messengers that will lighten the earth with God's glory, based on Revelation 18.1, we need to study something else. What must we study? We must study the first advent of Jesus Christ so we can better understand the second advent. Question, was there an angel who announced the first advent of Christ? Yes. Like the second advent? Yes. Did that angel at the birth of Christ lighten the earth with his glory? Yes. Let's go there now. Ready? Luke chapter 2. Question for you again. Who were the ones who received that angelic message that lightened the earth with glory? At the birth, the first advent of Christ. Who, friends? The shepherds. 
Not the priest in the temple. No. In Jerusalem, no. They were passed by. Not the rabbis, the professors in the school of theology. In Jerusalem, no. They were also passed by. So what is God telling us in the last days? Just before the second coming of Christ? The elders today, the deacons today, the pastors today, even many of the administrators of the Christian churches, not excluding the SDA movement, are going to be passed by the laymen, the self-supporting preachers, those who are independent. They are the ones as they're independent of these earthly institutions, they are dependent upon Jesus Christ, one with him. They are the ones who will not be passed by. They will be the recipients and the proclaimers, the promulgators of that message that will lighten the earth with God's glory. Question, has the premise been made? The point being made, ready now, Luke chapter 2. The Bible says, my friends, in verse number 8, may I scan this? Verse number 8 says, and they were in the same country. That's, that's very important. Same country, Jerusalem. The same country, shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. Verse 9, and lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them and the glory of the Lord shone around about them. Did they receive glory from that angel? Yes. So right beside verse 9 of Luke chapter 2, the end time application, Revelation 18 and verse 1. Can I find light? Go to verse 30. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people verse 32 a light to lighten the gentiles and the glory of thy people israel the same words revelation 18 verse 1 after these things i saw another angel come down from heaven having great power and the earth was lightened with his glory when that angel descended with light and glory and speak to the shepherds, watch carefully, what were their mission now? The mission of the shepherds were to go to verify the fact, the words of the angel, and then to proclaim that message to everyone they came in contact with. What were the shepherds doing? Watching their flock by night. Who would that represent? Shepherds or pastors of the sheep? That means these shepherds represent small groups of people in the last days. Not those in Jerusalem. Is that point clear? The majority were passed by. These are small, self-supporting groups. Small Bible study groups watching their flock by night. What night? The night of this earth's history. When darkness and apostasy and sins are prevalent both in the church and in the world. I want to be one of these shepherds. I want to be one of the flock. How about you? Look at verse 10. And God's angel now said unto the shepherds, fear not, behold, I bring you good tidings. And what did I cover yesterday in midday power search? Good tidings. I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. What I give you, proclaim to all people. Come to verse 15. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds, said one to another, let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. Verse number 17, and 
when they had seen it now, they saw Christ now. When they had seen it now, they made known abroad. Do you see it now, friends? The shepherds now received and preached, made known abroad the saying which was told to them concerning this child. Verse 18. And all they that heard it, do you see it now? Wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But wait a minute. Something happened there. Because who were the ones to be the communicators from God to the people? The pastors, the priests, the elders. What happened? Great Controversy, page 314 answers. It says, an angel visits the earth to see who are prepared to welcome Jesus. But he can discern no tokens of expectancy. He hears no voice of praise and triumph that the period, one more time, that the period of Messiah's coming is at hand. Most, not all. Many pastors aren't talking about current events that show the second coming, the mark of the beast, the period of the second coming is at hand. That's why they're going to be passed by. God's angel hovers for a time over the chosen city and the temple where the divine presence has been manifested for ages. But even here is the same indifference. The priests in their pomp and pride are offering, what friends? Polluted sacrifices in the temple. My friends, the first advent was near and in the temple apostasy was prevalent. The second coming is near, mark of the beast, apostasy is prevalent. In the temp in the churches which are now open, and even on the virtual church platform, Zoom, Facebook, among us SDA people. It says in the palaces of kings, in the assemblies of philosophers, in the schools of the rabbis. What schools would those be? Andrews University, Oakwood, Southern. Loma Linda, La Sierra, huh, name them. Even Northern Caribbean University, formerly known as West Indies College, all are alike unmindful of the wondrous fact that the Redeemer of men is about to appear. Christ is about to appear. They were passed by. Listen, read on. There's no evidence. That Christ is expected and no preparation. What? Imagine that. In amazement, the celestial messenger is about to return to heaven with the shameful tidings. With the shameful tidings. When he discovers a group of shepherds who are watching their flocks by night. That means the group of shepherds are not, were not connected to the Sanhedrin Council of Jerusalem. No, friends, who would they represent today? Churches, preachers, teachers who are not connected to the general conference, local conferences, unions of SDA. These are faithful Preachers connected to Jesus Christ. Blue words. He discovers a group of shepherds. What were they doing? They gaze in the starry heavens and are contemplating the prophecy, the prophecy of a Messiah to come to earth and longing for the advent of the world's Redeemer. Here is a company. Praise God. Here is a company that is prepared, that is prepared to receive the angelic message. So who will primarily be in that first group to receive the angelic message, light and power of Revelation 18? A similar group 
with a similar experience as those shepherds in Luke 2 at the first advent of Christ. If that's clear, send in the amens. Those who are alive, move on. Oh, what a lesson is this wonderful story of Bethlehem. Oh, how it rebukes our unbelief, our pride, and self-sufficiency. Oh, how it warns us to beware, lest by our criminal, our criminal indifference, we also fail to discern the signs of the times and therefore know not the day of our visitation. Are these points clear? Let's move on. It says, it was not alone upon the hills of Judea, not among the lowly shepherds only, that the angels found the watchers for Messiah's coming. Oh no, in the land of the heathen also were those that looked for Jesus to come. The philosophers of the East, students of nature, the Magi had seen God in his handiwork from the Hebrew scriptures. They had learned of the star, star angel, star to arise out of Jacob. And with eager desire, they awaited his coming. That savior to be, blue words, a light to lighten the Gentiles. That means the, the wise men from the east in Matthew 2, were they also studying prophecies? Yes. Did they receive the angelic message? Did they lighten Jerusalem with power? Yes. Verse 3, all of Jerusalem with Herod were troubled. Why? Because the men from the east came with an angelic message. What is the application? Many in Jerusalem were passed by and God used men from a heathen land. Last days, God is going to call many from Babylon, give them light, power, and glory, and they will take the place of many professed SDA leaders, SDA laymen, SDA laity. It's going to happen. Listen, friends, as we bring this to a close, red words. They were seekers for light, and light from the throne of God illumined the path for their feet while, while the priests and rabbis of Jerusalem, the appointed guardians and expounders of the truth, were shrouded in darkness. The heaven-sent star angel guided these Gentile strangers to the birthplace of the newborn king. Question, were the priests and rabbis passed by? Yes, they were. And notice, men from the heathen land, God did not lead them to Christ through the church at Jerusalem. No, he led them around the church to the Savior. That's, that's, that's startling. When the church should have been the conduit, the conveyor. Does it make sense? The mediator, as it were, in a secondary sense. Do you see it, my friends? Yes. But God bypassed the church. What will he do in the last days? The SDA movement is present day. The Jewish church at the first advent. It is. What may happen? What will happen? Not across the board, but for the most part, many local SDA churches are going to be passed by. Many in the communities, people who are being converted won't go to a local SDA church to receive Christ, salvation. No, they will go directly to Christ. So now notice, it was the shepherds that took the place of the priests and the rabbis, the, theo, the, the theologians. The shepherds took that, filled that gap. I want to be in that group. How about you, my friends? As I close, watch this. It says, 
like the tidings of the Savior's birth, the message of the second advent was not committed to whom? The religious leaders of the people? No, they had failed to preserve their connection with God and had refused light from heaven. Therefore, they were not of the number that God could use. They were passed by. What song comes to my mind? What song comes to your What hymn? Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. Is that your sentiment, my friends? <laughs> it's no time for us to be dilly-dallying. Watch this, friends. It says, the watchmen on the walls of Zion should have been the first, the first to catch the tidings of the Savior's advent, the first to lift their voices to pro proclaim him near, the first to warn the people to prepare for his coming. But friends, they were at ease, dreaming of peace and safety, preaching peace and safety, while the people in the churches, the young men in the schools of theology, were asleep in their sins. Last sentence, friends. A backsliding church. Last sentence, friends. A backsliding church closed their eyes, closed their eyes to the signs of the time. Stay tuned, friends. Send in your prayer request. It's a possibility. Stay tuned for the announcement this evening at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time as we continue our study. Study to show. We want to be in that group. Shepherds preparing the flock in the time of night. Father in heaven, we're thankful today May we not be in the group of a backsliding church that's blind to the signs of the times, even blind to our spiritual sickening condition. May we buy of you what we lack, the gold, the white raiment, the eye salve. Save us, we pray. We pray for this movement, SDA, leaders and laity across the board that we will no longer dilly-dally with our spiritual experience. You have called us to be that angelic voice to lighten the earth with the glory of God. That glory is Christ's righteousness, his character, justification, sanctification, that we might be glorified. Oh God, we pray, pass us not. Save us, we pray, in the name of Jesus Christ. May we now, like those shepherds, go now and impart, share what we have received today and previously. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.